Hello, it's always a pleasure to have you join us on the program Nimasa this week. Now today you will be seeing exactly what I say every time on the show, that Nimasa brings you information both home and abroad, all about the maritime sector, to keep you abreast in case you want to invest, in case you want to have a profession in uh, the maritime sector, or you just need to know more. What am I talking about? Knowledge is key, and Nimasa is very, very aware of that. That is why a library was launched. Nimasa's library was recently launched. We'll be sharing that with you. And guess what? It has a top-notch e-library attached to it too, alongside other things. So you see, Nimasa is very, 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 very serious about capacity building, knowledge enhancement, and more. So watch out for that. We have a lot lined up today, so please, I'd ask you to please sit back, relax, and enjoy. This is Nimasa this week, and I'm your guide, Cordelia Obe. Welcome. Introducing the new face of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, Nimasa. We are charting the direction for a maritime and regulating the industry for a better, bigger, and more economically stable Nigeria. Evolved to serve you better. We are Nimasa. New face, rejuvenated service. Nimasa, changing the tides in your favor. Nigeria is moving to the point where the maritime sector will be providing or producing more for her economy. The DG Nimasa knows this much that for any industry to produce more, it must have well-educated people in that sector. Knowledge is therefore key. This segment will be sharing with you something that would help the people in the maritime sector get more knowledge. We're talking about a library. Nimasa launched a library recently and the DG Nimasa stressed it again that capacity building is key. So a library is also very key. The Nimasa library is a hybrid having both the conventional and the electronic. It provides information resources and services to support the agency in pursuing its goals and achieving its mandate of safety, security and shipping development. Users are always demanding for physical materials due to their learning needs but majority are now craving e-resources due to its borderless nature. Clients can consult online books, images, videos, and all other information resource content with internet connection anywhere, anytime, instantly. The Nimasa Director General Dr. Bashir Jamo commissioned the facility and declared it open for use by both internal and external stakeholders. Speaking shortly before the commissioning ceremony, Dr. Jama noted that maritime is knowledge-based and Nigeria cannot afford to be left behind. This is what he said. The concept is for us to establish a library that can be enough for the stakeholders to utilize. If I say enough in terms of quality and quantity of materials that we have, I'm really happy and glad to say that we achieve more than 80% of that because the library is not only warehousing books that can help you to develop your knowledge, enhance your skill, reshape your culture, and reshape the industry knowledge, but it also moves a little bit upward to an e-library, which is modern library. And this is unique. It's not everywhere you can go and meet this kind of library. Speaking further, he noted that by the official opening of the Nimasa Knowledge Center e-library, the agency has once again shown beyond rhetoric 
that it is committed to bequeathing treasured assets to Nigeria, Africa, and the global maritime community. In addition to the library, we have museum. The museum is renovated. It's our sincere hope to reactivate that museum so that at the end of the day, we will be able to tell the world the history of maritime in Nigeria, where we are coming from and where we are going in that perspective. Maritime information, be it current or archival materials in form of document, audio or even video, are available electronically and stakeholders can access these materials for research purposes. The Nemasa Upgraded Library is also meant to preserve the country's maritime history and advance the industry as it hosts a lot of reference materials. Clients can consult online books, images, videos and all other information resource content. With internet connection, you are good to go anywhere. Anywhere you are, where you are sitting here, you just click and you are good to go to access the electronic copies. It guards against deterioration. Storage of digital books has succeeded in providing access to copies of materials that will otherwise fall to degradation from repeated use with digitization. It's possible to access contents using various formats which are much safer to use. The Nemasa DG also spoke on the NMRDC, which he said was designed as a training institution for the maritime industry. The center has modern training facilities, including smart classrooms, recreational facilities, and a standard guest house, which will be made available to interested researchers. We want to make sure that we provide the nation with the professional uh, maritime industry players because we are preparing the nation towards taking over the issue of revenue from oil to uh, maritime uh, revenue. Uh, as you are aware, I've been, uh, you know, making speeches recently that the maritime industry has the capacity to, uh, you know, provide a kind of income of 1.6 trillion dollars. Now, to ensure that this is being translated into practice. We don't have to continue to tell Nigerians theory. We want to see practice. So we have to develop a platform where research can be conducted on how we can harness those resources that can give us those funds. So that's the essence of this. Today we commission the library and we will continue to improve on the library for public good. In the maritime sector, no country is an island unto itself. It must have relationships with other countries to make sure their sector works. And so, Nigeria and Norway, they have a relationship. The new ambassador of the Royal Norwegian Embassy here in Nigeria paid a visit to the DG Nimasa and he pledged that it was going to work to advance the relations between Nigeria and Norway in the maritime domain. This would be his first working visit to any organization since his assumption in Nigeria recently. Norway is the world's fourth largest merchant marine, trailing only supremely dominant Great Britain with around half of the world's seaborne transport capacity, Germany and the United States. Around 6.6% of the sailing fleet and 3.6% of the steamship fleet were flying the Norwegian flag. Norway's merchant marine amounted to 1,227 tons per 1,000 inhabitants, so the average Norwegian actually owned more than one ton of shipping tonnage. So when the ambassador of Norway came calling at the corporate headquarters of Nemasa, collaboration for shipping development was surely the focus. His Excellency, Ambassador Knut Eilid Lane said he would build on existing accords between Norway and Nigeria as well as understandings reached by the two countries last year when a Nimasa delegation visited the Scandinavian country. Lane said his decisions to make Nimasa his first port of call after reporting in Nigeria underscored the prime importance Norway accorded maritime cooperation 
with Nigeria. Well, first of all, we, we see Nigeria as a partner uh, on the national uh, scene when it comes to maritime security. So we want to work with you as we take our seat at the Security Council of the UN from January. We also want to engage with you on best practices when it comes to uh, ships, registries and, uh, and maritime security. And we, uh, we are friends of the Gulf of uh, Guinea also. So we want to work with you on all of this issue and, and see uh, Nigeria as a strategic partner for us. In his remarks, the Nimasa DG Dr. Bashir Jamo said he was willing to cooperate with Lane to improve the cordial relations that existed between both countries since Nigeria's independence in 1960. The Nimasa Director General had identified potential areas of investment in the Nigerian maritime industry to include shipbuilding, ship repairs and wreck removal, saying, if well harnessed, Nigeria and Norway stood to reap abundant economic gains. We are looking forward to a lot of investments within the maritime sector. But uh, no, such areas include shipbuilding, wreck breaking, and wreck removal, which are uh, significantly a little bit uh, new. We are yet to have an established industry that we will see the rest, break it, and then turn it into another thing for uh, economic gain. In addition to that, you know, we have what we call the fishing industry. In those days, no used to be number one in terms of exporting their own ships into Nigeria. Today, the Nigerian fishing industry is having a lot of serious challenges uh, in terms of extension of shipping uh, toys, uh, in terms of security, most of the shipping business is getting done now. So I think this is the real time now that we need the presence of investors in terms of providing ship, shipping toys as well as if you're just joining us, thank you very much for being there. This is Nimasa this week. If you've been following this program, you would know that we usually would refer to intermodalism. Intermodalism simply spells out a format via which things can move from the ports to your home. And it involves not just the sea, the roads, it also involves the railways. Yes. So today on the program, we'll be bringing that sector in because they are stakeholders. We have the MD of the Nigerian Railway Corporations joining us on the program today to share with us the year, how it's been, and their role in everything. Enjoy. First of all, I have to thank the President and the Honorable Minister, Rotimi Amechi, for having the confidence of reappointing me for a second term of four years. Based on that, I have to redouble my efforts not to disappoint them so that Nigeria will also have the pleasure of having a real, real technocrat at the helm of affairs of Nigerian Railway Corporation. Uh, this time around, we are talking about modernization and we are sure that what we are doing, like the Lagos Abuja, we have to improve on the operations. We are hoping to start from Lagos Ibadan back to Lagos train service on the 7th of December. Uh, while we are waiting for the station to be completed. But we cannot uh, uh, afford to wait because it's festive time and because of the traffic uh, jam between Lagos and Ibadan, people spending four hours, five hours to get to Ibadan, we want to introduce at least a return trip from Ibadan to Lagos in the morning and in the evening, Lagos to Ibadan, starting from 7th. We hope to use our old stations while waiting for the new station to be completed for people to board in the Butimeta Junction and we have a stopover in Abekuta and the final stop with the P at Monia in Ibadan. The impacts on the congesting the port once we have a functional rail service cannot be overemphasized. So if, if you are moving 30 containers on a train and you can move four trains in a day out of the port, you are talking about uh, uh, 120 trailers out of our roads in a day. And depending on the way 
the, the terminal operators corporate, they can even load up to six trains of 30 wagons in a day. And now we are not limiting ourselves to just government providing the rolling stock. We can partner with private people. As they buy trailers, they can also buy wagons and buy locomotives. We have to enter into an MOU to, to, so that uh, they can recoup their money. Because I will not encourage, uh, personally, I, I will not deceive anybody. I advise them to say, I buy our own. Because you don't know what happens tomorrow. We can come into an arrangement why they buy. We find a way of moving for them and they upset the investment they have made. Eventually, the rolling stocks will remain government. That's the idea we are brought, and they don't lose anything. So that is the way to go. And our roads will be safer. People can travel with peace of mind. The trailers and the heavy trucks will still have a lot of business because we will not deliver to the doorstep of the warehouses or the industries or the personal uh, a place where they do the things that are to be used. So the, the, the trailer will stay longer, last longer. Instead of running from uh, Sokoto to Lagos, they can stay in Kano and go to Sokoto. They can stay in Kano and go to Maduguri. They can go to uh, Yobe and all those. And instead of drivers sleeping on the ferry because of the long distance, getting tired. So they will have run drive for four hours and you get to your destination. So the short long distances are heavy uh, as those loads will be off our track and it, uh, let the rail take that uh, which they are proper, uh, properly designed for to do by moving long distance uh, heavy as well on the track. Introducing the new face of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA. We are charting the direction for a maritime and regulating the industry for a better, bigger, and more economically stable Nigeria. Evolved to serve you better. We are NIMASA. New face, rejuvenated service. NIMASA. Changing the tides in your favor. A key project to support the reduction of GHG emissions from shipping in developing countries through regional maritime technology cooperation centers has been extended to June 2021. The Global MTCC Network GMN project is implemented by IMO and funded by the European Union. The Global Network of Maritime Technology Cooperation Centers MTCCS undertake pilot projects and promote technologies and operations to improve energy efficiency in the maritime sector. Since their establishment three years ago, the MTCCS in Africa, Asia, the Caribbean and the Pacific have established strong regional networks and are becoming important regional players with technical expertise in the field of maritime energy efficiency and greenhouse gas emissions knowledge. The centers have undertaken a range of pilot projects, completed port energy audits and established branch offices in three countries. More than 50 capacity building activities have brought together a total 2,400 attendees from various parts of the maritime sector. Despite recent challenges due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the MTCCS have developed alternative plans and ensured continued engagement across the regions. The six-month extension will allow the MTCCS to work towards financial sustainability as well as to continue their efforts in building regional capacity for the implementation of IMO emissions regulations, MAPOL Annex 6, and the decarbonization of maritime operations. Forthcoming events will include a virtual webinar series, online training of MARPOL Annex 6, and virtual conference and exhibitions. Well, I'm still feeling very, very excited. Having seen the library that NIMASA launched recently at the Nigerian Maritime Resource Development Center is a big boost to the sector, and I hope that you make use of it. That brings us to the tweet of the DG this week, and it was all about that center. And it goes, hashtag learning is living. Glad to finally commission our hashtag Nimasa library. The maritime domain is not a shoot from the hip sector. 
It is highly meticulous, requiring continuous learning, exposure to global developments. That is why at Nemasa Official is investing heavily in building such an asset. I say congratulations again to the Nigeria Maritime Administration and Safety Agency for that library and also Nigeria as a whole because in this region, that is one key project West Africans can be very proud of. Let me quickly remind you to please follow the DJ Nimasa on Twitter. He is at Jamo Bashir. You could also follow Nimasa on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. They are all at Nimasa Official. At Nimasa Official. You could also visit the website of the agency to know more. I've got to go now. Again, I would say, as the Yuletide gets closer, please don't let stress get closer. Just calm down. Enjoy the season. We have more time to celebrate other things. My name is Cordelia Obey. Take care of yourselves, my friend. Bye-bye.